say I've been getting tatted They say they like my thing, yeah I say that I'm flattered They ask me where I've been I say I've been getting tatted Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the top five parts that will fail on your M52 engine at 100,000 miles. Now, it's not going to be really a long video, but I'm just going to go over to you brief what actually fails so you guys get an idea what needs to be replaced immediately and what can cause a lot of you guys' problems that are coming to me saying you're not, your car's not running properly, you're getting rough running, your car's jerking. So I'm going to show you all them common causes and what you need to replace at 100k and what the parts will fail and what's causing all these issues. Okay, guys, so the first one is the vanilla solenoids which sit down here now. As many of you guys are aware, these do fail. And as you guys know, these keep the oil flow to the Vanos adjusters to advance the timing. When they start slowing down, what ends up happening is the timing don't advance properly. You end up with spark knock and that's why, and this can also cause your car to be stalling out, jerking at low RPM. And you'll also get a rough idle as well as jumping idle as well. So it's something you need to be aware of. Make sure you change them before 100k because they do like to fail and as i've said to you many times make sure you replace them with genuine bmw ones they will be the cause of your rough idle your jerking when you're coming to a stop as well so change them out because what's happening is they're stopping and they pulse open and close open and close to pump oil up to the vanos adjusters and if they ain't operate properly they'll stall your car because they're needed to advance the timing and also to retard the timing and they're constantly used when the car's running they're controlled by the dme and if dme feels they're not running properly your car will go into limp mode and it'll throw an engine management light so change them they're the first priority that you must do before 100k and it's the main cause of many people's fault codes the next one on these guys is the oil filter housing gasket and the oil cooler now as you guys know the oil filter housing gasket likes to leak and when it leaks it will leak straight down the block and end up creating coolant everywhere or you'll get loss of coolant from your expansion tank as well which is why a lot of people don't realize where their coolant's going that's because it's either leaking down the block or leaking into your tray right down here now, if you've not never done it before, it's a very easy maneuver. All you have to do is get a swivel socket, get it underneath here to release this torque, torque spot right here, and then that's it. You can get it straight out, or you can just lift the manifold up, unloosen all the manifold bolts, and just pull the manifold up so you can get more room in there. But it is an easy job to replace, and when it does leak, what ends up happening is it leaks down onto the belt and will derail your belts as well. So be aware of that, that it will derail your tensioner and destroy the belt if you don't replace that in time. And it is a common issue. It can fail between around 50 and 80K, and that's because of the engine heat cycles. Too many heat cycles end up destroying the gasket. I do recommend, though, that you use an official approved BMW gaskets because if they do, if you do buy a Chinese one, or a cheap one, it will fail again and you end up replacing it 50 times. So there's no point keep doing that job because what ends up happening is you end up threading these screws here and then you end up needing new bolts. So do it once and get it rectified immediately. The next one guys on this is the CCV. Now as you'll see, it sits at the back right down there where all the pipes are and it runs all along to the manifold there. Now all the CCV system runs up to the valve cover and then down to the sump. Now, when that fails, that can cause you to burn a huge amount of oil and it also lets the crankcase gases back into the, back into the manifold which then in turn ends up sucking them in here into the cylinders and clogging your piston rings now you would have gone to see my piston ring video about cleaning the piston rings on this now if your ccv does fail you will know because you'll get a huge amount of smoke from your exhaust and also that's usually from the ccv sticking now it's not a hard job and the manifold can be taken off in less than 15 minutes once you know how i can get this manifold off now in literally 10 minutes and it's not a hard job to replace at all by any means. What usually happens is they've got heaters on them, uh, electronic heaters, and the pipes end up cracking from the amount of times this heats up and cools down, heats up and cools down. Now, if you look down in the manifold, you'll see a, a little heater valve, which you'll see right there, which I've disconnected, which is the PCV heater, which can come on on its own. Now, my best advice is when you put the manifold back, do not plug that back in because as you guys know, it can burn your house and I call your, your whole car to set a light. So you do not want that plugged in. That's why I've got that off for that reason. You don't need it at all. The car will start and use the heaters alone on the CCV system. But again, if they do crack, what will happen is oil will get into the foam bits and you'll start leaking oil out the back of the engine. The pipe going to the sump likes to break as well and become brittle and break and it will throw oil onto the floor where it's not going back to the sump properly. So you've got to be aware of that as well. The next one on these guys is the valve cover, which is down here. And as you guys know, and the bolts. Now the valve cover on these do like to fare around 80 to 100K. Now when they fail, what ends up happening 
is it's usually because of the CCV blowing too much excess pressure into the crankcase and what ends up happening, these bolts here end up stretching up, pulling up for because they're al aluminium and they talk to yield. So what ends up happening is forcing the torque up and that's why a lot of people end up finding that their bolts are snapped inside the head. Luckily they're aluminium so you can just turn them out easy. But what ends up happening is they can't get pulled out and then it ends up leaking oil down here or out the back of the valve cover down the back there. And then you end up smelling the burning oil smell into your cabin that's usually from the valve cover where it's failed so it's something again you have to be aware of and it's something that will fail around 80 to 100k also you don't want the ccv to fail too much because what will happen is it will suck oil in as you see the cats are right there if it sucks oil in it, it will end up going into the cats will end up clogging your cats in turn and causing you to have catalyst conversion code so be aware of that as well so guys, the next one, which will cause you to lose power on these cars is the DISA flaps. Now, as you probably would have seen in my previous video, there's two here. This is a three-stage manifold. If you do have this engine with the silver valve cover, you will have the three-stage manifold. Only if you've got a 330R, 530R, you will not have the three-stage manifold. If you've got a 325R, you only have one DISA. Now, if you've got the two DISA valves, they like to fail. And then what ends up happening is the pin that ends up releasing on the flap and then getting sucked into the manifold which can damage the hinging crucially. And usually what ends up happening is when you rev it, the pin ends up spitting out the back of the exhaust where it's sucked into the cats, but you don't want that. Now what ends up happening when the flap don't stay closed is you lose all your torque in the lower RPM and also the high RPM. Now, the big one here controls the low RPM. The small one here controls the high RPM. Now, they're basically like intake manifold runners. They close and open when the DME requires to control the amount of power and the torque curve going to the car. Now, they do fail, and mine were completely failed when I got them. The flaps were um, flapping about all over the place, and they couldn't even shut. Now, the only way to detect them is by using ISTA, because it's the only one that will tell you, because these do not throw an engine light on, which can be very, very dangerous dangerous as well so this is why I advise always taking them out and checking them because if your CCV has failed what will happen is oil will get sucked into here into the manifold which in turn will get all over the flaps on the dissers which will end up getting into the motors now as you guys know the motors are electronic the motors end up seizing so it lets go of the flap because the plastics motor inside ends up just failing and it fails the motor which can end up losing the flap go and it also got like a little rubber grommet and a long pin which you don't want to come off in your manifold so I'd advise making sure you check them because these are, will be the calls of lost power as well if they do fail. So make sure you check your DISA flaps. Like I said, use ISTA, or if you do buy the car and you're not sure, when you get home, remove them both and check them because if they are failed, you will need new ones. So there you have it, guys. I've just gone over the top five parts that will fail at 100K miles on the M52 engine. I hope this is going to clear up a few things for a lot of you guys who ask me all the time, why my car's got this problem, why my car's got that problem. It's just going to help you understand a lot more why you're getting these problems and what symptoms you will get if you suffer with these issues. And if you are suffering with these issues, like I said, just please leave a comment in the box below and I'll be happy to answer your questions if you do have any kind of problems with your car that you can't seem to diagnose properly. Like I said, though, with these cars, and I always say it's the, it's the big best diagnostic software you can use to find your faults because on a normal scanner, the DISA valves do not come up and they also don't throw an engine light. So like I've always said, BMW should never set it like that because it's actually crucial for these cars that you need an engine light. For them, this is scanning, they can end up destroying the whole engine. But I believe the reason they never done that is because the flap itself will drop in the bottom of the manifold where the pin was about the only thing that will get sucked in and into the cylinders. But obviously as the cylinders going up and down, that can actually cause catastrophic failure for the cylinders itself. So, you know, it. You know, I don't know why BMW did it like that, but really they should have made it trigger an engine management light. But I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. I know a lot of you guys will enjoy this M52 video because you guys know um, I've got a lot of subscribers for M52 and you guys are my M52 subscribers. So this is why I try and put as many M52 videos as I can for you guys. So please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't as well. This is BMW Dr. Dean here. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and goodbye.